Welcome to another video. This is a very interesting number theory problem because while I was working through it, I made some discoveries which I think many people do not think about. But this would be a good opportunity for you to learn something or recall something you already know. Now, we want to find all x, y integer pairs such that the square of x plus 615 is a power of 2. We just don't know what power it is. Like I always say, you never know how many answers you're supposed to get. And a safe way to restrict your number of wanderings is to think of what x cannot be or what y cannot be or what they might be or the minimum or the maximum they might be. And those are the conditions that we're going to apply to this and be able to find all of the answers without missing any. Let's get into the video. So my very first thought would be, what is it that I could get on the right hand side? Look, this is a positive number. The square of any integer is positive. So a positive number plus 615 has a minimum of 615. That's if this is zero. But we know this is not zero because if this is zero, then 0 plus this is 615, and 615 has to be a power of 2. But we know 615 is not a power of 2. The closest power of 2 to 615 is 2 to the 9th, which is 512. And after that is 2 to the 10th, which is 1024. So 615 is between 5012, 512 and 1024. But we know this has to be greater than 615 because this guy is not zero. So the minimum that this power could be is 1024, which means y has to be 10 or more. So we got to say that y, observe, x is not equal to zero and y is greater than or equal to 10. Now, that calms you down a bit because you already know you're not looking for some small y and x cannot be zero. Okay, now, can x be positive or negative? Definitely, because the square of a negative or a positive number is the same thing. So x is either positive or negative. The only thing it's not, it's not zero. Can y be zero? No, we already told you y cannot be zero just by looking at this. y is greater than or equal to 10 and y is not negative. In fact, it doesn't make sense for y to be negative because if y is negative, this would be a fraction. You can add two integers and get a fraction. So, hmm, getting comfortable here. Okay, now, see the first thought that came to my mind, I can write this as difference of two squares, but this is not a square. The fact that it is 2 raised to the power of something does not mean it is something squared. For example, 2 cubed is 8, but 8 is not 2 to any integer. Nope. Let's, let me use n. n is not an integer. This is not true. No, I just messed up. It's not 2. It's not n squared. Come on. That's what I meant. <laughs> is not n squared, okay? So eight is not the square. So I cannot assume that because it's a power of two, it is a square. But if it were a square, my life would be super easy because I would solve this immediately. So the only question I wanna ask myself, is it possible that y is an even number? Because if y is an even number, then I can just make a square out of it. So, the investigation begins. What happens when you square 2? Let's think about it. You see, 2 to the first power. The last digit. I just want you to see something. Because this discovery changed my life forever. So, what is 2 to the first? You get 2. What is 2 squared? You get four as the last digit. What is two cubed? We already have that. It's eight, last digit. 
What is two to the fourth? The last digit is 16, is six, right? So we got two, four, eight. What is two to the fifth? We got 32, the last digit is two. The cycle has started again. Let's do two more. What is two to the sixth is 64, and this is four. What about two to the seventh is 128, the last digit is eight. Do you notice that the cycle just continues because you keep multiplying by two? But notice this, whenever the exponent is even, what do you see as the last digit? Let's do one more. Two to the eighth is 256. Last digit is six. So every time you raise two to an even power, you get a last digit of four or six. Keep that secret because it's going to help us. Okay? Relax. <laughs> because this was where I started relaxing because I noticed that the right hand side must be even. Every power of two is even, right? Okay, two raised to power, anything is an even number. This guy is an odd number. For you to get an even number from an odd number, you have to add another odd number. So clearly, x is odd. Because x squared must be odd, and the square root of an odd number is always odd. So we know that x squared is odd, which also means that x is odd. <laughs> now, we are squaring x and we're adding it to 615. What do you think? I didn't know this until today when I was trying to solve this problem. What happens when you square any odd number? The fact is, the last digit of any odd number is either 1, 9, or 5. Those are the possible options. Every single odd number in existence, when squared, their squares end in 1, 9, or 5. And that's what gave me the key to the solution. So, <clears throat> x squared always ends in 1, 5, or 9. So what I'm saying is, if the last digit, after adding an odd square, the square of an odd number to 615, if it matches 4 or 6, then we are guaranteed that y is an even number. Where is it? Where is the Y? Come on, like this guy's even. But if it matches, um, what do you call it? Where is, if it matches two and eight, then we know it is odd. These are the options for the odds. These are the options, and then we're gonna add it to 615. So, therefore, x squared plus 615 must end in 1 plus 5, that will be 616, must end in 6. 5 plus 5 will give you 10, which is 0. And then we have 9 plus 5 must end, that's 14, 604. Well, as far as the other side, 0 is not an option for the powers of 2, because there's no power of 2 that ends in 0. So the only options we have are 6 and 4, which is what we said. 2 to the y will end in 4 or 6 if y is even. Based on what we have, y cannot, the, the, um, this option is not available to us. 6 and 4 are the only options whenever you add the square of an odd number to 615. So guaranteed y is even. So we can write y as a square also. Then we have difference of two squares. If we move this here, So, by observation, we know that 2 to the y ends in 4 or 6, because 0 is not an option for us, and therefore y must be even. Okay? 
y is even. That is, y must be equal to some 2 times k. If y equals to some 2 times k, it means that 2 to the y can be written as 2 to the 2k, which is 2 to the k squared. So this equation is x squared plus 615 equals 2 to the k squared. So if I want to do difference of two squares, actually, I can't move this guy here. I'll have to move this guy here and leave the 615 here. So I know that 615 equals 2 to the k squared minus x squared, which by factoring will be 2 to the k minus x times 2 to the k plus x. Nice. And that's 600 and 15. So with this you can solve equations easily because all I have to do is say there are many options. I can write 615 as 1 times 615, yes, so I can say 1 times 615 equals these two multiplied together or I can say what divides 615? Um, I know 3 divides. 3 goes in 6 2 times. So that's going to be 3 times. It goes in 6 2 times. does not go in 0, but it goes in 15, which is going to be 5 times. Yes, 205. Okay, that's another option. So I can say that this equals 1 and this equals this, or this equals this and this equals this, because this is in the factored form, so I can write it as a factor of two factors. Or I can say um, 5 divides it. Um, it's just going to be 5 times. How many times will 5 divide this? It's going to be top, 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 top. 5 goes in 6 once. 5 goes in 11 twice. And 5 goes in 15 Three times, 123. Oh, okay. This is another option. And the final option is 123 is if, oh, we got three, oh, we can multiply these two together. That's 15 because they're prime numbers. Well, what number is this? 123, 3 in 12 is 4, and in 3 is 41, which is prime. So there are, the prime factors of this number are actually um, 3, 5, and 41. So those are the possible combinations. So it means I'm going to do 15 times 15 times 41 equals these two, this product. So now I just have to take each of these and do some magic with them. Solve a system of equations, you know? Let's do the first pair. Imagine if we say, so for one, we have 2 to the k minus x equals 1 and 2 to the k plus 1 equals 615. What does this tell me? If I add these two, oh sorry, plus x, if I add these two equations, I'm going to get 2 times 2 to the k, okay? is going to be 616. If I divide by 2, I'm going to get 2 to the k equals 308. Well, this is not a valid answer because 308 is not a power of 2, so this equation does not work and this line is not valid. We got to go to somebody else. So it's going to be 3 and 205. So it's going to be 3 and 205. So you might have a question. Why don't you switch the numbers? You know, like, why don't you make this one that and make that this? It's the same thing because remember, we're adding the equations, so nothing is going to change. <laughs> okay, so here we go. If we do this, this is going to be the sum of this will be 208. If you divide by 2, you get 104. Well, apparently, um, this doesn't work either. 
Let's try five and one, two, three. So we can try five. Um, if we try five, we have five and one, two, three. So we have, we add the two, we get 128. If we divide by two, what do we get? 64. This is valid because here two to the sixth is 64, right? So it means K equals six. This implies K is equal to six. We got an answer. This one goes boom. And then the last one is 15. We do the same thing. So I know this doesn't work. Okay, you can check it yourself. So the only thing that works is K equals six. And with that, we have found our Y. Therefore, Y must be two times six, which is equal to 12. Now, does it meet the condition that we set initially? We said Y must be greater than or equal to 10. That makes me happy because it is true. Now that y is greater than or equal to 10, which means y equals 12, we could go back to the equation that we were solving and just solve it here. So we have x squared um, plus 615 equals 2 to the 12. Now 2 to the 12 is 4096. So we know that x squared equals 4096 minus 615. So that x squared is equal to 3481. That's a familiar number, 59. So we know that x will be equal to plus or minus the square root of 3481. That means x equals plus or minus 59. So we got our set. I'm gonna write the sets here. So we know, based on what we have done, that x comma y will be equal to, x has to be negative, negative 59 comma 12, and 59 comma 12. Those are the two answers we're supposed to get, and no other options, because of all the restrictions we've created. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.